Lombo, you mentioned Derrick Henry uh, earlier. He's had really good success against Spags. If you look at last three games when he was at Tennessee versus Steve Spagnuolo's Chiefs defense, he's averaged 5.6 a carry. He's got four touchdowns, like 389 yards, 69 carries. Whoa. So he, he's done well. This was the number one rush offense in the, in the league last year. Uh, the Ravens, 156 a game, right? And, and Munkin and Harbaugh and the rest of those people have been listening to all of us the whole offseason about why didn't you run the football, you know, in the AFC championship game. So, you know they're going to pump the ball to, uh, to Derek. You know, is it going to be pistol? Will we see under center? Probably. But what has Spags got to do defensively, in your opinion? Because he's not, you know, he loves the pressure stuff, not a – a consistent eight-man extra guy in the box, whatever. I know he's got Chris Jones inside, but what do you what do you anticipate in them doing to slow him down? Well, I, I think to me he's got to set a hard edge on both sides. The one thing about Henry, as you know, Chuck coordinating against him when he gets that thing going downhill off the tackle side, you know, like here on the well, this is a tight zone here, but when he gets going like that, nobody wants to tackle. Him. Not in the first quarter, not in the second quarter, or the third or fourth quarter. Uh, I think to me, you know, he when he got a losing Snead is going to be interesting to see how they play this. Do they still play too high? Are they willing to play a seven man front? Look, the one thing about having Lamar, you could talk. We're going to hear it all about in the next couple of days. Oh, they'll get an eight man front. They'll do this. But you and I both know if you're in an eight man front and Lamar Jackson tra- front tries to run a boot or a naked, somebody's going with them. Whether it's a fake or not, somebody's following them out. So those eight-man fronts, Chuck, are really seven-man fronts. You and I had this argument all the time with Mr. Davis out in Las, out in Oakland. You know, huh, we got to get in that eight-man front. I want to set that. And then all of a sudden, well, who's got the boot? Well, the end's got the boot. Now we're in a seven-man front, okay? So we're really a gap short here. And I think, to me, that's going to be the key is how does he handle it? And Jones is going to have to play really good. I think they win. The, they have to win the game up front against the three new offensive linemen that the Ravens employ today. How about the thought of Patrick Ricard is back there, too? Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, I just – we've always been big fans of his just because of how – that's all me back there. Mm-hmm. That, that, that is a throwback football player. Just my job is to get in here and move bodies. And he's so athletic, so quick. And then you have – Derrick Henry, who is running, and then Lamar's the fear to come outside. I mean, it feels like there's so many. They're going to weaponize that, I assume. And then with both tight ends that they have, with Likely and Andrews, Andrews being back is – people forgot, I think. People have forgot about Mark Andrews. And then them just being able to sneak out. I mean, that is – that's old school football, first of all, very old school football. But also – that is something that just works. It's like Novocaine. Yeah. That, that is going to work inevitably at some point. I'm excited to see what Spags does. What do you think he's going to do as a defensive-minded guy? What would you do? No, I think, you know, Blombo made a great point. If you can make Derrick Henry restart at the line of scrimmage, meaning pump linebackers through the uh, an open gap, through the B gap. Penetration. Penetration, but get his feet to stop in the backfield. Say they put Ricard back there. And he's, we used to do this, you know, against Tennessee back in the day, or Tennessee did it versus Jamal uh, Lewis way back when he was playing for the Ravens a long time ago. Same type of guy. If you didn't get his feet stopped in the backfield and he was running that cutback, it would go hash to hash. You couldn't catch it from behind. So I think blitzing some linebackers, he's got Tranquil, he's got Nick Bolton, he's got Chanel. He's got guys like that that they can penetrate and try to hit him in the backfield and make him try to restart his feet. That's okay. got to be huge. All right, let's go. Let's see some action out of Spags' oh, yeah. D. You say he's going to be bringing a lot of heat. Chuck actually has some film here on Spags' defense to kind of lay it out. We'll watch that next hour, I believe. We talked about Kansas City being able to stop the run against Baltimore. Baltimore adds Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry anomaly? Like, what do you think about Derrick Henry's game? And would you, like, how, you just, the message is just like, hey, you're going to have to stand up. Like, what? how do you coach against Derrick Henry? Yeah, I think you absolutely have to stand up to it. This guy can, uh, you know, he's an explosive player that can push the pile, gain the the tough yards when he needs to, and he can also, you know, hit the home run. But I think the best thing about Derrick Henry is the fourth quarter. You know, if you can get into a close game with him in the fourth quarter, he wears defenses down, and, uh, you know, he's really a tough guy to tackle, you know, when once he, you know, gets those guys a little bit tired and they're arm tackling and, you know, maybe there aren't quite as many of them there as there were early in the game. You know, he, he can break those tackles. So, uh, again, I don't think there's any way Baltimore runs the ball as infrequently as they did in the AFC Championship game. 
I think that Kansas City is going to have to stop it, and we'll see whether or not they can. Why does matching him up with Lamar Jackson just seem like an impossible task to stop? Like th- That's like the perfect quarterback for Derrick Henry to be there, right? Because when I was at West Virginia, Pat White obviously had the speed to get the edge, but we had Owen Schmidt who was going to run you over. So he had to load the box a little bit, but if you're able to get outside, you're good. Lamar, Derrick Henry seems like the perfect fit, and when it happened, we are all like, of course, Derrick Henry is a Baltimore Raven. Is it a perfect fit over there in your eyes? Well, I, I really think, Pat, the toughest thing about the Baltimore offense is their combination of power and speed. I think it's unlike any other team in the league, honestly. You know, they have Derrick Henry. They have Richard. You know, they have a power running game and a mentality that they can get the ball down there and, and hit you right in the mouth. And if you put too many big, slow guys on the field, it's hard to deal with Jackson's speed and the speed that they have at receiver. They have great downfield speed with a receiver. So if you have too many slow guys out there, you have trouble with their speed. If you have too many little guys out there, you have trouble with their power. I think they're a really hard team to match up against. And you want to go in there and stop the run, but you know, you've got some fast players at quarterback, fast players at receiver. I mean, really fast players. And if you can't catch them, the, those guys gain a lot of yards in a hurry. So uh, I think that's why they're such a tough matchup. It's not just Lamar. He's a big problem. But it's the overall speed they have at receiver uh, to go along with the power that they have running the ball and the attitude they have running the ball. I assume more questions will pop up about this game tomorrow and the game on Friday as our conversation continues to flow here. So excited that football is back. Derrick Henry joins the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, obviously, the Baltimore Ravens are a run team. You played for the Ravens when Harbaugh was the coach. The culture is we're going to be a tough football team. And it feels like they reloaded and are stacked. New faces on the offensive line. How much does that worry you? And what are your thoughts on the Baltimore Ravens run game tonight? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, they lost Zeitler. They lost Timson. They're two guards from last year. McCarry stepping in at one of the tackles. He's been a mainstay swing guy. He's filled in at every position, but now he's the starter. And we all know when you become the starter versus the backup guy, it's a lot different. You got to do it every day. You got to be consistent. But the two interior guys, uh, they're, I mean, Voorhees really, I'm really excited to watch this kid play. He was a stud coming out of college, tore his ACL before the draft, and now he's getting his opportunity. They got him in like the fifth round. He probably would have been like a first or second rounder had that not happened. So I'm excited about that. Uh, to see that, but they got you know Chris Jones on the other side. It's got a, there's a tough matchup for three new guys on the interior. Having heard Lombardi earlier thinking that they're going to go a lot of pistol, I kind of think they're going to go a lot more offset back and play the whole zone read thing. Mm-hmm. That opens up the backside cut for Derrick Henry getting downhill. I think it's going to be really good. And Ricard too, you can have. You know, there's a lot of different plays. Now, if they go under center, obviously that's a lot easier, I think, for the entirety of it. But if they're going zone read with Lamar Jackson old school, and then also you have those two tight ends, that could be a beautiful thing to kind of watch Spagnuolo try to figure out. 